spent a little bit of time in, in Hebrews talking about you know, the snares that so easily entangle us. That's right. And uh, in other places in Hebrews talking about uh, laboring against unbelief and uh, entering his rest, coming before his throne boldly. Amen. And uh, in order to be able to do all these things, Faith work with patience. Patience. So we have hope. And hope does not disappoint to dump another book in the Romans. But in order not to be disappointed, you have to experience trust in the Lord Amen. for everything. Absolutely everything whether it's uh, where the next meal is coming from where the next tank of gas is coming from where the next car payment is coming from or where the next segment of sleep is coming from and um, uh, when I was sharing some of my struggle uh, Ricky and Davey gave me the if you continue in my word, and yet you are my disciple, and, and uh, right. I know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's that's right. Chapter eight, Amen. and that kind of befuddled me a little bit, but uh, there was a lot of struggle, and a lot of seeking Him, and a lot of other scriptures that came into play. You know, what I saw going on was a battle with fear. And some of it is the fear of not being able to uh, communicate. Uh, of course, we're selfish, and the first thing that comes to my mind is what I need. <laughs> but not being able to communicate his truth, his, what he's done for me, how great a Lord he is. And that's, that's the one he's trying to get my attention on. The, not being able to communicate my need falls into the category of he's my provision, he's my source. And if I don't stand and believe that, then all the rest of it's just so much verbiage. So, <clears throat> you know, Paul says he's given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Yeah. Sound minds can enter his rest. Mm -hmm. When you're Amen. doing his will, his way, he gets you rest. Yeah. Um, also, we do a chorus here about the weapons of a warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Um, and, uh, let me, let me, I'm going to butcher this one. This was very important. Okay. Okay. Getting, getting into, Second Corinthians is one of these things that I kind of get bounced into now and then. And I do have uh, some background in having actually read it and I thought I understood some of it. But when it gets to be, becoming personal application, the next verse is casting down imagination. What, what verse in second? Um, we were three, four, and ten, second Corinthians. Yeah. Say what? Ten, four, uh, five. Second Corinthians ten. Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> syntax. Uh, syntax is everything. <laughs> How you ordered those? It was God. Three, four, and I got ten. you. I got you. Mm -hmm. All right. Second Corinthians chapter ten. Right. Verses now, now on verse three, five. five. Okay, start. Can you start over in three? Verse three. Thank you. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That's going to tank. You can't war in the spirit with your flesh. No. Can't do it. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. What kind of strongholds? The enemy strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 
That's a pretty high standard. That's the standard we're called to. And when you have bring have brought into captivity every thought of the obedience of Jesus Christ, you actually in my particular condition, you can stand there and say, all right, Lord, Lord. You said that uh, man was not made for the Sabbath, the Sabbath was made for man. There is a time and a place for your rest. I won't enter it. It's time for us to get some rest so we can, I might, be banging around, hit and missing where your will is. I'll never find it if I can't get some rest here. That's right. And Lord, you're my provision and my reason for existence. So let's get some rest. And we'll beat the enemy. Amen. And give him the word. And the word of blood power and sound mind. Not fear. Fear of getting older. Fear of incapacity, the fear of this thing doesn't work anymore. Stuff you used to walk off. There's a certain arrogance and pride in youth. You don't get the you don't get that luxury in age. As you get older, your experience is supposed to be work work and fight. That just doesn't disappoint. You've actually walked with the Lord, He's shown you some stuff. You start applying what He's shown you. And he can reward that. Amen. He can bless that. And he can use that to bless others. And that's why we're here. We're here to share the gospel, to bless others, to bring forth fruit, to bring forth fruit, to bring forth more fruit. And uh, I don't claim to have had a total handle on it all yet. But it is, you know, this is one of the reasons why it's working out your salvation with fear and trembling out of Philippians. Because it is when you have to confront this that you want to cover that mirror every time you pass it. You have to confront what's here when it's not what it's supposed to be, which is him filling it. But it's you and all your preferences and stuff that he tolerated before. He don't want to tolerate it anymore. Now it's now it's you and him. It's you and him, and if it need be, it's on your knees, on your face before him. Whatever it takes, he's going to get those who loves, who he loves, attention. Amen. And praise God for it. It's a ministry of, of uh, salvation to those whom he loves. feel like that all the time. And it's an inconvenience many times to those who seeks who you seek out for help. An inconvenience. But you know, even to them it's a blessing. Because the Lord loves us. 